And now, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PrunerCast. Yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Don Kosher. How well did that go down? We can talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at PrunerMarketing.com. Well, hello there, Mr. Peter. How are you, Mr. Don? Very well, very well. And you? I'm doing extremely well, as always. Feeling good, feeling pumped, feeling excited. Oh, oh look at that athlete speak. <laughs> pumped. <laughs> Welcome one and all to this week's Premier Cast. I'm Pete Williams. Oh, and I'm Dominic Gatcha. We may as well introduce ourselves this week. We kind of don't do it that often, so we may as well for all the new listeners. Nah. Well, it's it's not about us, it's about the listeners. Exactly. There you go. And uh, speaking of listeners, I want to get straight into it, mister. I'm none of your triathlon, biathlon, Iron Man, Superman malarkey. Straight <laughs> into it this week. All right. Um... We've had quite a few people ask about something that you are quietly a bit of a, a bit of a star with, um, and that and I know you're you're a very big star with this stuff. Um, Is this an adult only episode? <laughs> oh dear! The, anyone else hear the dull thud as the conversation Sorry. went subterranean? All right. Um, okay. What are we talking about? Let's get on topic. Let's get back on topic. Look at that. What is that? Thirty seconds and straight off topic. Nice try. Okay. Um, Outsourcing. Yes. Outsourcing is is a huge topic in the internet marketing space, but it's not just for internet marketers. Um, and I this, this cropped up not only in, in notes from listeners. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the feedback, as always. Uh, appreciate it on the iTunes store and everywhere else. Uh, not only from listeners, but uh, I was talking in another group of uh, people that I work with, and the topic came up because someone was saying that they were really, uh, they had this, this really mind-numbing task that they don't really like. It takes a long time. They like the overall job and the overall business, but there's this one task that they don't like, or there's this one group of tasks that they don't like. Um, and, and I said, oh, you, you should outsource it. And they said, oh, no, no the loss of control, They'll, <laughs> the costs will spiral and blah, like this. And I, 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 I can bring this up later on if it's pertinent, the actual example, but uh, it just made me really think that, that it's a pertinent topic. So um, I'm, I'm hoping this week, rather than the usual chat, 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 I'm hoping that this week you're going to teach me something. So off you go, Professor Pete. That's a, mate, you've, you've given me a very broad uh, field to run into here. Um, okay, outsourcing. Where do we start? Oh, look, the thing about outsourcing to a certain extent is I don't think it's worth chatting you about you know, how to go into Elance and find someone to do a logo for you because that sort of stuff is out there on the web a lot. And there's a lot of crap out there, let's be honest about it. There's also a lot of good stuff about how to sort of do certain outsourcing things and it's probably not worth covering that sort of stuff because hopefully a lot of people have already experienced that and if not hey let us know and we'll do another episode on on outsourcing and stuff but it's probably worth touching on sort of the why to outsource a little bit um a little bit of the what to outsource um and definitely probably a lot about the how i guess it's probably a good way to break it down so why outsource um to answer my own question there, <laughs> look, there's probably a few reasons. And for those of you who have read um, Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Workweek, hopefully that gives you a, a big enough why because Tim did a phenomenal job of um, putting together a, a very good argument for why to outsource. And fundamentally, it comes down to a couple of things. is um, Success in business is now no longer an individual game. It's a team sport. So if you want to grow a business, whether it might be um, an internet-based business, which is a lot of no a lot of our listeners are the internet uh, marketers as much as I hate that term as such but they, they have a business where it's solely marketed on the internet uh, but even in real world businesses there's a huge reason of why to outsource um, so from an internet perspective it's about you know having people on your team um, to actually help you grow your business and, and really you know get that income you want and that, that, that profit you want um, but you need to have a team to do that because you don't have enough time to do that um, and also because of the want, you don't want to have to sort of do all the crappy sort of mundane jobs that are needed to, to, to build a business. From a real world perspective, we have um, in our in Infinity Telecommunications team, we have quite a few uh, Philippine staff who work solely on that business. Uh, from a range of tasks, from website design development to um, admin, you know, product managers to a certain extent in terms of our e-commerce side of that business, and also got some people who are now working in the, the accounts and admin side of team. 
so to speak, to sort of do some of the mundane admin sort of data entry kind of roles that are required when you've got a multi-million dollar business and a lot of transactions going through that. So there's a whole range of things you can do with outsourcing in that space as well. Um, so I guess the why around all of that um, is geo-arbitrage is a, is a great term. And I think Tim kind of uh, really popularized that term anyway in that with geo-arbitrage, it's about hiring and recruiting A players to your team using the arbitrage and geological arbitrage elements of foreign exchange and currency. So you can get an A player that in Australian dollars might cost you sixty, seventy, fifty thousand dollars a year. You can get that employee from somewhere overseas due to uh, currency arbitrage for closer to twelve thousand, thirteen thousand dollars a year. Maybe more, maybe less, depending on the role. So there's a huge uh, economical value of of outsourcing that way um, from a employee perspective. But also, there's a lot of out tasking stuff too. We sort of get one off tasks like that logo example I um I mentioned earlier. Does that sort of give enough of overview to the why for people who wouldn't have sort of got that? Do you reckon, Dom? That's a, a really good perspective on it. Uh, one thing I would add. The, the other side of geo-arbitrage that a lot of people don't think about, and not so relevant, ironically, for you in Australia talking about using people in the Philippines, but for me, over, over in, in Europe, one of the great things that I find with my outsource team, depending on where they are in the world, is that if I set a task at the end of my workday, it's the beginning of their workday. Absolutely. And when I come back the next day at the beginning of my workday, very often that task's been done. So it's a great way of working, almost working continually. Your business is working all the time. And and obviously, if you have a team, there are always going to be people working when you're not working or working when you're working on another project. But even for the small tasks, it's sometimes quite satisfying to get to the end of a work day to stack up all these jobs and just pop off the instructions come back and that work's been done and you can kind of carry on from where they left off so that's another side but yeah that's yeah. a great introduction to the why for outsourcing and clearly there's also the skill set thing as well you know obviously as we've mentioned on this podcast numerous times you're my media guy you look after all my, my media for um, a lot of projects i'm involved with so video editing and that sort of stuff it's yeah i can do it but I don't, I don't do a good job of it. Um, so that's where you come in. You're phenomenal, that sort of stuff. So that's why I give you um, those projects because you enjoy it, you're great at it, and it's good value, and it works out really, really well for all parties. So um, that's another reason for outsourcing too. It's just purely a skill shortage kind of thing. Absolutely, and, and not, to, not to digress too much on this point, but I think <clears throat> uh, going from the four-hour work week to Michael... Gerber's book. The you title. love him, don't you? I do, I do. But it's it's the, the thing is with the E Myth is it's one of those things that as a small business owner, let alone a big business owner, he makes one of the most important points, which is don't work in your business, work on your business. And because of that, outsourcing is is absolutely key to that. And and you it, this comes from your point. I know and not a lot of people know this about Pete, but as well as being annoyingly fit, annoyingly good-looking, and just generally annoyingly everything, he's also incredibly technically skilled. And a lot of the work that I do for Pete, Pete could do himself. And when you are working on your business, it's very easy to do these things that that you can do. Uh, most small businesses, the, the first thing most small business owners fall into is is doing the books themselves, doing the finances, doing things like that. And it's more obvious, like product production and things like that, product creation and things like that. People get dragged into. And and one of the great things, one of the reasons to outsource is to stop yourself getting sucked in. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly. Uh, in terms of in terms of using those skills, and so outsourcing that that work, you first of all it stops you from doing the stuff yourself. But second of all, it stops you from getting sucked into it. Yeah, exactly. So you're putting positive constraints around yourself. Exactly. So it's not just because you can't actually do that thing, and a lot of outsourcing comes from not you not having the skill to be able to do it. You go out and you buy the skill in. Um, but more importantly, on a on a bigger thinking scale. Um, it's this idea that 
if you outsource it, you are that's a great point. You're putting a positive constraint around yourself. Um, but that's I think that's definitely kind of covered the why quite quite well there. Yeah. Speaking of uh, positive constraints, can you make a note in that long, long list of, of notes you have about episode topics? I think we should probably do a whole episode around positive constraints and what they are and how they apply because I think they're pretty powerful. So uh, that's definitely something we should note. And also, I want to give you a present. I'm going to get a friend of mine, uh, Mike Rhodes, onto the podcast one day. He is another e-myth... Um, What's the nice way of putting this? Fan, aficionado. Aficionado. Um, he's, I think he's qualified in e-myth something or other. E-mythery? Is that, is that, is that the, uh, <laughs> the term? So uh, I think he'd be cool to get on and chat. And you two can just have that episode yourself one day and I'll just sit back and listen to you guys talk all things Michael Gerber. But um, <laughs> back to the, the, the topic at hand, the outsourcing side of yep. stuff. I think it, it's really worth hitting on a couple of things and, and asking or coming about a couple of questions that we, we, again, we kind of always blend the episodes here on Preneurcast, don't we? Because a couple of episodes ago, we spoke about questions, powerful questions to, to, answer, to ask yourself and answer. And I think there's some around outsourcing too, because, you know, why are you outsourcing is probably a, a very good question to ask yourself very, very early on. Because a lot of people have um, probably tried outsourcing and, and it hasn't worked for their business for probably numerous reasons. And they've probably the answer to the question, why are they actually outsourcing, was probably a pretty poor answer if they actually asked themselves that question. Because you know a lot of people outsource for the, for the fun of outsourcing. Let's be brutally honest about it. And yeah, hey, how cool is I've got someone in, in India or the Philippines or overseas working for me. I'm the man. I've got staff and I've got a personal assistant in the Philippines. And, you know, hey, it's cool. It, it, it is definitely interesting dinner conversation. Don't get me wrong. When like people sort of find out that um, my main personal assistant is actually based in the Philippines, it makes a very interesting di- dinner conversation. But realistically, like you shouldn't do that just for, for good conversation. If that's the only reason you have a, an outsourced staff member, you've got a pretty poor life and go and get yourself a hobby. But um, I guess the, the the point I'm trying to make is that why are you outsourcing? Because some people outsource for you know for the fun of outsourcing because they want to try it because I think it's the right thing to do, but there's some real reasons of why you should be doing it. One is because you can't do the skill. If you can't do something and it's needed for your business and it's really, really needed for your business, then outsource it. That's kind of obvious because you don't have the time because you're working on more profitable things. Now, this is the, the key part to that, that question or answer is you're working on more profitable things. So many people I see who are an entrepreneur on any sort of level they start outsourcing stuff because they, you know, don't have the time, um, in inverted commas. But what are they going to do with that time otherwise? Are they actually doing that, using that time to sit on the couch and watch TV? What are they actually doing with that time to, to browse the web and just read blog posts? You know, that's not the that's not the best use of your time. You're better off using that time to actually do the skill rather than forking out money for someone else to do it. The only time you should be outsourcing and getting that leverage is when your time is better spent writing a sales copy sitting in front of a video camera and doing a sales pitch, writing a sales script to give to your staff to convert more people when they walk into your retail store. You've got to make sure that what you're actually doing is generating more income for the business than it would have been by doing that particular task. And so many people actually outsource too quickly because they think that's where they need to go and there's no money left over at the end of the day because they start paying staff members and that go, there goes all the profit or any potential of profit because it's all been sucked out of the business. You've got no marketing dollars left. So that's a really big thing that people have to really answer themselves is why are they outsourcing now and are they outsourcing the best thing? Awesome. Really, really good summary of that. And, and that moves us on to, so what, what to outsource? Mechanics. Ooh. Outsource mechanics. There we go. That's the podcast. Let's wrap it up. Awesome. <laughs> now, I think, look, you know, you and I have spoken about this um, for a few different reasons recently, and I, I think, you know, let, let's define mechanics. Um, the mechanics are, okay, Dom, how, do you do, how would you describe the mechanics in this sense? Let me, let me see if you can kind of be a bit more coherent than I can be. <clears throat> to me, the mechanics of anything is anything that, that comes under the term rote. Anything that's repeatable. In fact, if you can basically, if you can write down a sequence of steps to achieve a task, that task can be outsourced because it becomes a mechanical or systemized thing. Some of them are obvious. I mean, you mentioned one already, which was data entry. 
Um, and data entry is one thing that I think most people would identify as a mechanical uh, rote operation. Time after time, pretty much the same buttons are being pressed to get pretty much the same result. And it's not a lot of buttons, then the, the operation isn't complicated. But they can be far more elaborate. For example, um, booking a series or blocking, blocking a series of webinars on GoToWebinar. That's a mechanical sequence of, of things. That, did you just experience um, that in your inbox about five minutes ago? Uh, amazingly, because <laughs> uh, you didn't do this. I, didn't I just do like to say, I just like to say, hi, Flo. Yes, that is Flo, my, uh, not to confuse with Fleur, who's my fiance, Flo, no. my PA. Yeah. It's very hard when I start typing FL and um, occasionally the wrong email goes to the wrong female. It's quite interesting. I, I, I don't doubt that Flo, Flo would handle it quite well, whatever you sent her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she'd, have a, she'd, have a, she'd struggle to turn up for dinner, but other than that, I think she'd, she'd do very well. It's just weird when but I yet, ask, ask Flo to do you know, jobs for me. She's like, why are you asking me to do this? <laughs> <laughs> don't you have an hour or <laughs> Exactly. Brilliant. But, but yeah, absolutely, I've just experienced that. I experienced both ends of the process. I experienced you sending the instructions to Flo because it's a project I'm involved in, and I also experienced Flo dealing with the mechanics of filling out, let's say, eight go-to webinar booking forms correctly with the right logos and the right descriptions and everything else and getting that stuff done. And, and you literally just got an email back in your inbox saying, done, done. Yep. And that's, that's a really good example of a slightly more elaborate mechanical job. Is absolutely, that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, look, I think that the, the controversial lesson to take out of that is, and I'll explain in a second, but don't outsource or even outtask creativity. Outsource and outtask mechanics. So don't outsource or outtask creativity, outsource and outtask mechanics. So let me, let me break this down. Outtasking, which I kind of touched on earlier, is the process of getting a one, one-off task done. So you go, can you design me a logo? Can you write me this piece of software? It's a one-off task. It's got a clear start and done. Uh, outsourcing is where you basically have a staff member join your team and they do something that's rinse and repeatable over and over again, such as an article writer, um, someone doing data entry for you, a web developer, whatever it might be. So that's the outtasking versus outsourcing stuff. Now, we've designed, defined the mechanics. Let me define why I'm saying don't outsource creativity. And I'm, I'm being completely all encapsulating when I say creativity I'm saying even like logo designs and you'll probably experience this Dom when I've CC'd you into different things with the designers that I have um, overseas is I get pretty specific with my requirements for something I'll go off and I'll say I need a logo or a WordPress theme or a blah 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 designed uh, and I'll say here are three examples that I want here's a rough sketch that I've done with my live scribe pen and PDF or here's a scribble I've done on my um, iPad using my finger this is pretty much exactly what I want and I give them a pretty tight brief it's not hey I need a logo go and design it um, because I kind of know what I want and it also means that I'm going to get exactly what I want because it's been defined budgets won't blow out timelines won't blow out uh, another example is, you know, you know, article writing to a certain extent, you know, or getting someone to write on your behalf, getting high quality articles written on your behalf. You know, that sort of creativity. You want to control all the creative stuff yourself as the entrepreneur, and then let the mechanic side of stuff um, be outsourced. So let's. I kind of gave an example of the logo design. Let's talk article writing for a second to sort of give you that example as well, whether it might be a, an article for a blog post you're writing, maybe you're trying to do some backlinking, but let's you know talk from a business perspective. Maybe it's a blog you're writing for your internet marketing site, a blog article you're writing for your real-world businesses website blog. Maybe it's an article that you're writing for a trade journal to get some um, exposure in the media and get that halo effect and that market leadership positioning. What you want to do is outsource the mechanics of article writing but keep control of the creativity. Now, it sounds a bit weird, I know, but let me give you an example. You could, and this is what I do quite regularly, sit down, draw a mind map or a bullet point list or some sort of um, mental dump of the main key points you want to touch on from a creativity perspective in the article. What's the main topic of the article? What are the main points and arguments I'm trying to get across? Bullet point those down. Then grab a microphone 
or an iPhone or some sort of recording device and just talk your way through those bullet points or that mind map. Just getting out. It doesn't have to be coherent. You can stumble. You can, you know, repeat yourself. Just get those main points down in a coherent manner in your language, in your voice because that's the creative. You are the market leader. You are the business leader. So get that creativity stuff down and then outsource the article writing portion, which is the mechanics. That's the transcription of that, the editing of it to make it sound like a decent article that actually uh, makes sense. Uh, obviously, the spell checking, the thesaurus, the, all that sort of stuff is the mechanics of that. The main core of the article, which is you and your opinion, has been done by you. The creativity part has been done by you. You want to outsource all the mechanics. And that goes from everything, whether it might be an article writing, it might be anything that needs some sort of creativity. You've got, to, you've got to own and control that and outsource the mechanics. So anything in your business that's not that should be outsourced. Accounting, the, the design, the installation of WordPress on your blog, the actual you know putting together of the direct mail piece you're going to send out to your clients, whatever it might be, that sort of stuff is a mechanic that you can outsource. Just control the creativity side of things. Absolutely, really good actually, and, and that's I think might dispel quite a few people's uh, illusions about outs- what to outsource. One great thing I heard because uh, we haven't talked about. Ed Dale for a while. Um, Ed, Ed, Ed said once, once a, a while ago on the topic of outsourcing, um, he said, don't, don't ever put outsourcing an initiative in the same sentence. Ooh, good call. Yep. And that's a, little, that's a little bit talking to what you're talking about and a little bit on a slightly separate topic. But I think it's, it's important to break that out. You're talking, you're saying basically that if something is uniquely you obviously you are the person that needs to do it so you're the person that creates the core piece of content the audio track that goes behind the video the rough sketch of the logo with the live scrap pen which we'll come back to um, the, the the pieces the sequence of emails that need to be put into the autoresponder uh, and the, the the rough text that needs to go in but after that you can then outsource or outtask that job to have it professionally tidied up let's you know being being a little more common common language and in a way that's kind of how we started absolutely you create you create the core content the bit that's uniquely pete which is the voiceover track Don't give away the secrets but pete you've already given it away in a really big excellent video you did a while ago sorry oh, um yeah. okay oh yeah look on the market samurai site sorry um Anyway, we've yes, got to get better um, jokes. Yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> we have really to get, better, get better, jokes. better jokes. Sorry. Hey, look, look, you can't be good at everything, and you're, we're really good at this stuff. Like, can we outsource the joke can... writing? Yeah, you know, we could do that. Yeah, yeah. Look, hey, look, some people get known for jokes, some people get known for sound effects. We just give good content. Okay, so I, I, as I interrupt you, when you were giving a, a gold piece of nugget. That's all right. But this, this idea of don't, don't put outsourcing an initiative in the same sentence is really, really important. Uh, and that, I think, speaks really to the... starts to go to the how. Because part of the how, to me, is how you construct the request. What you've got to look out for. This, this, to me, is the most important part of it, is what to look out for or what to not do or how to correctly request these tasks. Um, and, and can we kind of, you know, use... A, the last bit of this podcast with some ninja tips on kind of controlling the job, making sure the job gets done the way you want it to, making sure the jobs are the right kinds of jobs, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, look, before I give that, I just want to touch on your point really quickly and give a, a, a okay. great quote that I heard once. Um, I, I can't remember the context in which I heard it, but basically um, the question was asked, um, what happens... Oh, well, my advice is to, to train your team. Like, as part of your team's role, particularly if you're getting it at geo arbitrage rates, encourage or make it a mandatory thing for your staff to spend the last hour every day learning something. Go and give them access to that $2,000 course you bought last week and say, go through this, whether it's the challenge.co that we've spoken about numerous times, Ed Dale's awesome, awesome project. Um, or some other sort of project or product or course or program 
Give them access to it. Whether it's directly related to what they do or not, let them actually absorb the context uh, in which you're teaching them or asking them to do tasks. Let them actually understand what you, what you learn and they'll help them grow. And, and the question was, well, what happens if I train them and they leave? That's, and that's a fair question. It's a fair worry for a lot of people. What if I invest, tell them to invest in air and they leave me? Well, the, the awesome response I heard was, well, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? Yes, I, I also remember that. Mm-hmm. And that had the same impact on me. That is a very, very powerful thing. Yeah. And you do need to think about that. Oh. A lot of people do, do, don't don't even conceive of that of, of the the fact that these are human beings. You're asking a human being to do a job, and and if you were to hire somebody to to work in your shop or in your office, and you just hired them in, sat them there, and said do that job, and you never trained them and never supported them in doing the job, you couldn't realistically expect them to carry on happy, 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 could you? But they do. This is, this is the thing that blows my mind. So many people hire a staff member, and they would. They, you, I agree with you. They wouldn't think about hiring someone and then not training them. So they spend the first week training them and supporting them and mentoring them. And after that first week, they walk away. So they do train them in their first week. How many jobs have you had where you've been training the first week and then forgotten about? It's insane. Anyway. Yeah. Let's leave with a whole bunch of um, brain dump stuff. So you're going to go through managing a team, monitoring a team, communicating with a team. Is that sort of just a random thing? Before we go into, before we go into that, though, I'd just like to, to so say part of you talked about finding people and that we don't need to go over that um, because there's lots of people out there talking about how you find an outsourcer. Let's just clarify here. When we talk about outsourcing or outtasking, a lot of people at the moment, really trendy topic at the moment is outsourcing to the Philippines. That's not the only place where you can send an outsourced task or you can find a, a good outsourcer. You need to find the right person for the job wherever they are, um, whether it's somebody that is in Canada that does your logo design. You use them only when you need a logo, and maybe you pay a little bit more, but, hey, they're the best logo designer you've got. Uh, whether it's somebody in the Philippines or America or Scandinavia. There's some really good web guys in, uh, in the, the Northern European regions, Absolutely. for example. You know, uh, some really good programmers. A, a lot of, uh, a lot of the um, iPhone app programmers come from that part of the world. Yep. Um, so don't, don't be closeted, don't be t- tunnel vision with, with where you're looking for these people. Is, is that but after that let's let's hit each one of those points that you said so like sending the job out monitoring the job communicating let's see if we can hit what each one of those Ooh, okay um if you, look i've got a whole bunch of things let me just try and share some off the top of my head um Go. one of the key the or resources that, that we've put together as a team is what i refer to as a work wiki now we've got a couple of different work wikis one is um using a service called edit me uh, which is a really cool online service. Another one we've just built in- internally for Infinity is a just a WordPress um, install. Let me try and s- um, let me try and work out what the theme is, and I'll explain in a second while this loads. So, the Work Wiki is basically uh, an online wiki, similar to Wikipedia, full of all the tasks uh, and procedures, all the rinse and repeat stuff that our team does. Um, now, I'm using a WordPress theme that we will link up in the show notes. I don't know what the actual theme is, but I'll check with Flow and I'll uh, link it up in the, in the show notes. But basically what we do is we use a product called Screen Steps, which is a Mac product. I think it's available for the PC as well. It is indeed it available is indeed. for the awesome. PC as well. Yep. And basically it's a software pro- tool that allows you to, to make s- screenshots and steps of a process. So you um, do the first step of the process, click a button, it takes a screenshot of your computer, you write up a description of what had to be done in that step, go to the next step, hit a button, take another screenshot, and it basically really quickly and easily allows you to create uh, a manual or process uh, around a particular um, task. Uh, and then you can grab all of that and upload it to a, um, a, a web page really, really easily. So you have this one in, one online digital resource that's easily um, able to change and adapt as the software or the processes change um, for all the different things your team has to do. So that's one big thing we've built over time is every time there's a new process, uh, whether it might be 
creating a, uh, a go-to webinar series of um, conference calls or installing a WordPress blog uh, or um, inserting a, an AP invoice into our accounting software, whatever it might be, giving someone access to a membership site, uh, creating a credit note on our software that we use from our accounting perspective, whatever it might be. We do work wikis for all of those. So we can always, no matter what happens, go back to that. So if a staff member is sick and someone else has to fill in, they can do that. As you grow your team and get new staff on, they can be inducted to learn all the processes and systems and stuff like that. So that's one big thing that we've really, really uh, built on uh, quite regularly is our, is our work wiki. So using just a WordPress theme now, which is really cool, um, but the other option, obviously, is um, Edit Me, which is really cool. Um, so that's sort of, I guess, part of the, the tool set that we use. Um, in terms of managing staff, I actually have a, a daily email that, that all our team have to, to send through. Uh, and basically, that daily email has a, a few things on there. It has, um, first thing is, uh, what were they uh, uh, trying to achieve today? What was their, their to-do list, basically? Where they listed out in bullet form what all their, their items were for, for that day they were trying to achieve and what the estimated time was to actually uh, do each of those tasks. Then the second part of that is uh, what was achieved. Um, so they simply email me through um, what they were able to achieve that day, uh, which is great. So I can see exactly what was ticked off on the list. Uh, then the next thing is what wasn't achieved today and why. So if they weren't able to get through stuff that they actually had on their to-do list, why weren't they able to? A previous task ran over time. Um, I couldn't log into this particular service and I sent a support desk ticket. Um, whatever it might be that caused them not to be able to do that task, I want to know why because is that a, uh, a, a software issue or a service issue? Is it a staff member issue? Is it my issue? Is it a repeating concern they need to address? Is it something more underlying that they don't get through their tasks every day? What is it? Um, what personal development steps did they take that day? I.e., what video did they watch? What um, module in a course did they watch? Whatever it might be. Uh, the next thing, which is really, really important, is what do they need from me and by when? So if there's stuff they need from me to be able to, to do their job or the things they're, they're waiting on from me, that, that's basically my action list. What do, what do I have to do to work on to get my team um, more productive or to make sure they're using their time as productively as possible? Uh, and then the last thing is, what's the plan for tomorrow? So this is what they are uh, planning to work on tomorrow with time estimates against all of that. So that way I can read that and, and I can reply saying, oh, actually, hang on, change this order or, or don't do this or, or do this instead. Uh, and that primarily, that last thing is, what's their plan for tomorrow becomes their first bit the following day. What are they doing that day? So it's just a cut and paste. So that's sort of the, the daily report. So I can just look at each of my staff members, just a quick email, run through it, Reply to that really quickly with uh, you know suggestions, advice, tips, congratulations, whatever it might be uh, in that email. So it makes it very, very easy to sort of keep on top of them from a daily perspective because they are around the globe. So that's sort of, I guess, the daily sort of um, check. What other things should I be mentioning? The, the big thing for me, I mean, and, and just to close this one down really, is, is can you describe or give some tips for assigning the jobs, for actually handing over the instructions, what to put in the instructions, ways to be clear, things like that. Because I think that's a lot of people fall down. I hear a lot of people say, oh, my outsourcer, they're just not that good. They don't seem to really get it. They don't yeah. seem to blah, blah, blah. And, and nine times out of ten, with all due respect, you didn't ask the right question or you didn't set the task properly. 11 times out of 10, mate. No, don't, 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 let, don't let people off the hook. In my opinion, I I'm, I, go on. I was gonna say, in my opinion, it's mostly the issues in the brief. Yeah. So can you, can you talk to that for a little bit just, just as a kind of a closeout? Yeah, sure. Look, there's probably a, a few things. Um, oh, let me try where to start. First thing is um, give them some context. Um, I know we spoke about this in a podcast recently. Uh, give you the, some context. So the first thing I'll say is, um, you know, the context or the the objective here is to create a logo that's going to be used uh, on a series of um, products, online membership sites, and blah blah blah. So give people the objective and the context of what this is going to be used for and how does it fit into the, the grand scheme of things, particularly if they've been working with you for a while. Um, we're going to create a new blah, blah, blah that does X, Y, and Z that is going to be used for this sort of clientele and it's sort of similar to this but it's different to that. So just to set some objectives um, of, or some context, so to speak, or the, the objective of the task. 
Well, then the objective of the result is probably a better way to put it. So what is the, the objective of the result we're trying to achieve here? So describe that. Uh, then obviously describe what needs to be done. I need a blah, 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 and I need a wah, 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 and a woo, 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 whatever it might be. Obviously, that's where you describe the, the thing. And that's what most people only do is just do the descriptive bit. The I need four articles written that are 200 words in length that are targeted for this particular keyword. You know, that, that's what that's all I'll say, or whatever it might be. So you give that. Uh, then I also recommend you give some examples. So to give you a bit of context, here's some similar stuff that might help you get an idea of what I'm trying to achieve. YouTube video links, uh, article website links, examples of competition of your competitor stuff, whatever it might be, and say this is sort of some similar stuff to give you some ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, if you've got time. Um, bullet point down what I liked about each of these, what, what I liked, what I disliked about each of these things. Uh, and then um, if you can, here's, some, here's a rough idea of what I'm thinking. So it might be if you have a live scribe pen and a notebook, write out a bit of an idea of what you're after. Do a sketch of what you need, whatever it might be, and actually send that along with it to give some people a bit more context of what you're after. Uh, and then also, obviously, a, a deadline if you can. I'd like this by a certain deadline or a budget or a time frame, something like that. They're probably, I guess, a high level sort of checklist you can work down. Uh, I know, Dom, you deal getting a lot of briefs from people, not just myself. So I guess what, what do you like as an outsourcer to actually receive in a brief is probably a good question. Very, very good question. Um, <clears throat> before I go to that, I'd just like to highlight the we've mentioned LiveScribe Pen a number of times. Now, if you haven't come across LiveScribe Pens, I strongly recommend that if you deal with any form of any need to communicate ideas with people, you seriously look at one of these things. Uh, I won't go into it too much, but basically, it's a pen and some special paper, pads of paper of different sizes that you can buy and when the pen is turned on anything that you draw on this sheet of paper is recorded electronically and can be downloaded to a computer and even turned into a PDF at the same time that you're drawing the pen can record your voice so you can literally either hand draw a diagram and just send that electronic diagram which is a nice feature, save scanning and all that stuff Um, But you can also annotate the diagram. So if you're one of these people, like I am, a visual thinker, that tends to like to draw out what it is that you want and talk it through as you're drawing, these things are an absolute godsend. So seriously look into that. That's that's why we keep babbling on about live scribe pens, because they're a great way of getting what's in your head onto the paper. Um, So, Pete, back to your question, which is, what do I like to receive? Um, Absolutely, your points are, are, are... spot on i like to know where what i'm producing is going and it can be sometimes it can be vitally important sometimes it can just be nice to know for example if i'm producing a video clip and it's going into say an optimized press sales page and they have very strange sizes for their videos um, and you really should produce your video to the to the final size. So rather than me exporting a full scale, high definition video clip, the client really actually needs it at the right size. And nine times out of ten, they've hired me because scaling a video clip is not something that's within their skill set. So my job is to give them that clip at the right size. Otherwise, one of the things that tends to happen if if I don't get that data is they upload the clip to wherever it is they store their clips and they embed it in the page with however they do that. Let's not get dragged into that. Um, but the clip, well, they, they say, oh, the clip doesn't run smoothly or it looks squiggly or oh, it's not right. And they blame me because I'm the video guy and I'm supposed to give them the right thing. So, so by giving me that data, you're allowing me to do the job to the best of my ability. Again, give examples. A lot of people have seen other people's sales videos or info products, the two big things that I do, um, or ebooks, another thing that I do. Um, and, and you may have seen a style, it might be the typeface, it might be the animation style, it might be the style of the graphics that people have used, the way the text comes onto the screen, um, the, the layout of the PDF for the ebook, all those things. The best thing you can do is send me a link, show me that video. Um, because I can get probably get more from seeing that video than you telling me, because I, it's my skill. 
my skill is to work out I can reverse engineer most people's work and, and go, oh, right, yeah, they did that with that or that's how they did that. So I can give you a better job. Um, and absolutely, deliverable and deadline are the, are the two big things that, that are important whenever you specify a job, but to me or to anyone. I need to know when you need it for. And very often what I will do is whenever you tell me you need it, I'll ask you some more questions about that because you might think you need it. Like you'll say, oh, the product goes live next Wednesday, um, at which point I know that what you want then is the file with at least a few days before that deadline because you've got to give that file maybe to your outsourcer that uploads things and puts them on your web page. Um, so think that through. If you're the person giving the deadline, think it through. You know, does that deadline give you enough time to take that asset or that product and move it on to the next step in the chain? Um, and deliverable, well, what do you expect? I already gave an idea of the one of the things like the context, why that's important. If you're asking for a logo, did, if you need to specify what format you want it in. And if you don't know the answer to that, maybe the outsourcer can help you or the outtasker can help you or maybe you can find some help. Um, but if you don't tell somebody, then I have this phrase um, which replies across everything. Okay, and, and just to, to kind of close this one out, my, my phrase is, is a, a kind of a twist, a little joke on the uh, WYSIWYG, with the old WYSIWYG phrase, which is what you see is what you get. And mine is Yafiji. And Yafiji applies to outsourcing more than anything else. And Yafiji stands for, you asked for it, you got it. <laughs> and I repeat, can we get some new joke writers? No, no, seriously. That's true, though. You're absolutely right. What what you ask for is what you get. So if you don't ask for it properly... So that's worth asking the question, what other question should I ask? Let me say that again. It's worth asking the question when you give a brief to someone. What other questions should I be asking right now? What else do you need to know? And actually encourage them into the briefing process and get them involved in that because you never know. They might give you some good questions that you hadn't thought of, some better ways to do it, some more... Um, input to define the brief better, which means you're going to get a quicker result, a better result, and a cheaper result. Absolutely. In fact, um, this is something that I do with all my new clients. All my new clients get a call up front. And in that call, I talk to them about their processes. I talk to them about my processes. And I try and help my clients to, to do as little work as possible on their part and yet give me the most amount of content or the best product, the best input, the best source materials. Um, and by asking, and I do this with my outsourcers, I ask them, what's the best thing I can give you? How do you want to receive the job? What, what assets and resources do you need to do your job the best? Um, and that, as you say, can save time and money. That's it, guys. Shall we wrap it up? Oh. Yep, let's wrap it up there. Cool, Beautiful. guys. Hopefully that was a good one on outsourcing, a slightly different type of content than you get out there in the with other people's outsourcing information um, from people that really do do this stuff. From both sides of the coin. Indeed. See you guys next week. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PreneurCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gocher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at www.preneurmarketing.com or drop them a line via PreneurCast at PreneurGroup.com.